Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi was a major contributor to the educational system during his lifetime and the educational system as we know it today. Johann Pestalozzi was born in the year 1746 on January 12th in Zurich, Switzerland and died in the year of 1827 on February 17th. His father was a surgeon and died at the age of 33. At the time, Pestalozzi was only six years of age and had two other siblings. He was the middle child. The family had a maid named Barbara Schmid, who after the death of Pestalozzi's father, helped to financially support Pestalozzi's mother and her children. Pestalozzi spent the majority of his youth in poverty. In 1751, he began his education at the Collegium Humanitatis Gymnasium. His instructors were Johann Jacob Bodmer and Johann Jacob Brittinger, who taught the subjects of history, politics, and the Greek and Hebrew languages. It is interesting that both of his instructors and Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi shared the same first name. During his formative years, Pestalozzi would travel with his grandfather, who was a clergyman. Pestalozzi would accompany his grandfather on trips to the schools and homes of the parishioner, parishioners. As a result of these visits, Pestalozzi became aware of the poverty of the peasants living in the country and the poor, inadequate education they received from the schools that did little to abolish the suffering and ignorance of the children who were forced to work in the factories. This left a lasting impression on the young Pestalozzi and was the catalyst that inspired his campaign to make acceptable education available to the poor when he got older. Pestalozzi's journey to becoming one of the great master teachers and reformers was a long one, riddled with various failures. He attempted a profession as a clergyman, followed after following after the footsteps of his grandfather, but failed because he found he was not comfortable with public speaking. He was greatly influenced by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau and so became inspired to pursue a career in law and justice. This is what he said about Jean-Jacques Jean Rousseau. The ideal system of liberty, also to which Rousseau imparted fresh animation, increased in me the visionary desire for a more extended sphere of activity in which I might promote the welfare and happiness of the people. Juvenile ideas as to what it was necessary and, and possible to do in this respect in my native town and for which I had been destined and caused the thought to spring up within me that it might be possible by the study of the law to find a career that would be likely to procure for me sooner or later the opportunity and means of exercising an active influence on the civil condition of my native town and even on my native land. His aspirations as a lawyer were short-lived. From the years 1765 to 1767, during the mid-18th century, the Swiss government condemned Rousseau's philosophies, claiming that his ideas were too dangerous and consequently resentencing the philosopher to prison. Rousseau was idolized by Pestolo Pestolozzi. Pestalozzi became part of the Helvetic Society, a group composed of about 20 philosophers who embraced Rousseau's teachings. The group's goal was advanced freedom for all. During this time of government upheaval, Pestalozzi was only 19. He contributed many articles to the social newspaper and exposed the corruption of officials and may have helped a colleague escape prison. He was arrested for his involvement in this and spent three days in prison until proven innocent. However, he made a lot of enemies in the political world, destroying his hopes for a legal career. He married Anna Schultes in 1769, bought 15 acres of land, and attempted farming. Unfortunately, the land that he purchased was unsuitable for farming. The banks withdrew their support, and three days later, his first and only child, Jean-Jacques, was born. His son often had epileptic seizures and poor health. This also put a financial strain on the family. Then, when the family faced financial ruin, friends helped him keep the house and a small parcel of land in 1774. Pestalozzi turned his home, called Newhoff, into an industrial school where impoverished children could work and gain an education without being bound to anyone. However, due to inadequate finances, Pestalozzi had to close the doors to an otherwise successful school in 1779. Pestalozzi and his family were once again faced with financial ruin. Pestalozzi spent the next 30 years at his home in Newhoff, writing and developing his educational philosophy. 
He did not see his ideas come to fruition until in, in his 50s. The historian Kate Silver said about him, For 30 years, Pestalozzi lived in isolation on his new Hoppe estate, writing profuse, profusely on educational, political, and economical topics, indicating ways of improving the lot of the poor. His proposals were ignored by his own countrymen, and he became increasingly despondent. He would have accepted the post of educational advisor anywhere in Europe had it been forthcoming. He expressed a firm belief in the resources of human nature and his conviction that people are responsible for their moral and intellectual state. Thus, Pestalozzi was convinced education should develop the individual's faculties to think for himself. Pestalozzi's chance came after the French Revolution when he was more than 50 years old. The French imposed Helvetic Republic in Switzerland invited him to organize higher education, but he preferred to begin at the beginning. He collected scores of destitute war orphans and cared for them almost single-handedly, attempting to create a family atmosphere and to restore their moral qualities. These few exhausting months in Strauss of 1799 were, according to Pestalozzi's own account, the happiest days of his life. Pestalozzi contributed greatly to the philosophy of early education. Pestalozzi believed that education should be broken down to its elements. He stressed that life educates and therefore contributes to the development of the child, child's personality, character, and reason. During his late career as an educator, Pestalozzi opened and ran Bergdorf, Thierden, and Stans. All were successful schools. After only eight months of teaching at Bergdorf, School authorities evaluated Pestalozzi's work and praised him for his accomplishments in such a short time. In only eight months, his pupils, ages five to six, had learned to read proficiently, write, draw, and understand arithmetic. Furthermore, the Verdun school became so famous, people from all over the world came to study there. Many foreign visitors learned from him and introduced his methods into their own teaching. Pestalozzi's philosophy of education was based on the child and their individual needs and differences, as well as sense perception, self-activity, and dividing children into different groups based on their ability rather than their age. He also helped to establish physical education in the public school system, believing that physical exercise and outdoor activity are directly tied to general, moral, and intellectual education. His philosophy covered four spheres of concept, home and family, vocational and individual self-determination, state and nation, and inner sense. Pestalozzi believed in teaching his students how to be balanced in all aspects of their lives, not just secular learning. He is also responsible for elementarizing or breaking down teaching message methods to their most basic levels so that anyone could effectively teach young children. This is why grade schools are often referred to as elementary schools. Pestalozzi believed teaching the fundamental elements of education should be basic, straightforward, and uncomplicated. He also emphasized that children should learn through activity and be free to pursue that which interests them and come up with their own conclusions instead of having the answers provided for them. He believed that the aim of teaching should be to educate the whole child to create a balance or equilibrium between hands, heart, and head. Pestalozzi remarked, I wish the rest to rest education from the outworn order of doddering old teaching packs, as well as from, as well as from the newfangled order of cheap artificial teaching tricks, and entrust it to the eternal powers of nature herself, to the light which God has kindled and kept alive in the hearts of fathers and mothers, to the interests of parents who desire their children to grow up in the favor of God with men. Pestalozzi's ideas were considered radical and unheard of. He understood that personality is sacred and believed that children should be treated with the same amount of respect that, doubt, that adults are afforded. He taught that each child has potential and, education, and educators should love the children they teach. Kindness ruled in his schools and much to the astonishment of others, he abolished flogging and corporal punishment. Furthermore, because of his influence, Illiteracy in Sweden was almost completely overcome by 1830. Pestalozzi is significant to educators today because he had taught the importance of educators teaching their students 
to be well-rounded in all aspects of their lives. He believed education was central to improving society and working with those who opposed and helped form free public education systems. He believed that learning from everyday life was just as important as learning secular knowledge and incorporated his philosophies into the public school curriculum. His teaching methods are still used today in elementary schools all over the world, including the United States. Pesolozzi put that which was right above that which is correct. He was committed to people, especially children of the poor and their well-being. I am grateful that even though it took a long time for his ideas to be accepted, that he did not give up on his dream to ensure that all children are given the opportunity to receive an adequate education. I also am grateful that he was able to perceive that breaking education down to its simplest form would be the most effective way to teach young minds. I cannot imagine the state of our elementary that our elementary schools would be in had Pestalozzi not developed his teaching philosophy and then been given the chance to incorporate his ideas into the education of young minds. He is responsible for making elementary school fun and engaging for young children without being overly stressful yet allowing them to learn quickly and to their full potential.